All right, so uh, this is going to be a new little sub-series that I'm going to do, and it's going to be about the TV shows that I used to watch as a kid. And I think it's safe to say that TV shows were a much simpler form of entertainment back then. Well, maybe not simpler, considering is it cake is a thing, for Christ's sake. What's the word I'm looking for? Oh, that's right, better. TV was better in the 90s, and I'm going to prove it today. And the first show I want to talk about is the Nickelodeon show Double Dare. Now, Double Dare was a game show that pitted two families against each other in trivia, physical challenges, and of course, the Big Daddy obstacle course at the end. You got a young Mark Summers as the host, and yes, that's Mark with a C because, well, we spelled things differently in the 90s. Back then, you spelled Mark with a C, you spelled kids with a Z, all because it was cool with a fucking K. So you have a family on each side of the stage, and they're given some arbitrary team name. Okay, first up, we got the blue team, the Curious Uncles. They're gonna go up against the red team, the Manitoba Stranglers. Looks like it's gonna be a good game. But it didn't matter what the family team names were because they were all the same. Each family had two kids, the dad always had a mustache, and everybody's mom just kinda looked like this. And for whatever reason, when they'd introduce the families, they'd always make like the youngest kid tell some bullshit story about their family, which always took way too goddamn long. So little Susie, I heard you have a funny story about the time the family dog threw up in the driveway. Care to tell us about that story? Um, yeah, one time there was like this dog, um, it was our dog, and we were leaving, and um, and then the dog, it was in the morning, um, and when it happened, we were there, over by the bushes, wait, before that, my brother was walking, and then we looked over, and um, and I think it was raining, no, it wasn't raining, and then mom was there, and then we looked over, and then the dog threw up in the driveway. That was a fantastic story there, little Susie. How about we do some fucking trivia now? Now, Double Dare starts out as a basic trivia game, but there's a catch. And that is, if you don't know the answer, you can always dare the other family to answer it and hope that they're just as stupid as you are. Well, hold on a goddamn minute. The show's called Double Dare, after all. And that is because they could always double dare your ass back. Now you have to do a physical challenge and look like a complete asshole on cable television. And since trivia is boring as hell by itself, I think they made the trivia questions a little difficult just so they could get to the goddamn physical challenges. All right, blue team. First question. <clears throat> what is the hypotenuse derivative of the fifth hyperbole when it's divided by a denominator of the fifth degree? Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna dare on this one. Okay, over to the red team. Red team, what is the hypotenuse derivative? Fucking double dare, Mark. I put up drywall for a living. What the hell? And we're back to the blue team again. Physical challenge, Mark. For Christ's sake, we'll do the fucking physical challenge. Now, the physical challenges were really never all that physical. It was really just an excuse for one of the kids to make their parents look like an asshole in front of a live studio audience. All right, little Susie, you got 30 seconds to fling this bucket of bear shit down there at your dad who's got a bucket taped to his head like an asshole. Ready, set, go. Oh, and there they go. Little Susie's giving it her all. Dad's down there and he's looking like he's eating shit, both literally and figuratively. The crowd is going wild. Oh, boy, it's going to be close. <laughs> oh, time's up. You lose. Hundred dollars to the red team. Dad, here's a moist towelette. Now get the fuck off my stage. So this whole fiasco goes on over and over again until Mark has had enough of that happy horse shit. And at that point, whichever family has the most money goes on to the Big Daddy Obstacle Course. And the other family gets a pair of Skechers and they promptly fuck off. Now, of course, the Obstacle Course was the best part of the entire show. It's what put the asses in the seats at the Double Dare Studios, if you will. I mean, you gotta cross the monkey bars. You gotta go sliding down slides into vats of slime or gack, if you will. You remember Gak? That bright colored goopy shit? I think that's what modern TV's missing these days. There's not enough Gak in it. You go ask anybody on the street that's under the age of 25 what Gak is, they wouldn't have a clue. Gak? What the hell? What is that, a fucking Dr. Seuss character? What the hell is Gak? Alright, so the whole point of the obstacle course is, you have 60 seconds to retrieve 8 red flags. Each flag that you got, you won a prize. Now each prize, of course, got progressively better as you went. Which meant that the first flag was always some bullshit prize. Like 15 minutes before the show started, the showrunners were like, Hey, uh, you took care of that first prize, right? What? No, I thought you did. And then they had to, like, run to a Dollar General real quick to find something. But it didn't matter because they always hyped it up on the show like it was the best prize fucking possible. All right, for the first flag, they gotta climb over this baby pool filled with a fuck ton of gack. If they do that, Harvey, what do they win? Uh, it's a bottle of palm olive dish soap. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's right. Whether you're scrubbing pots and pans or you're disciplining foul mouth children, dish soap by foul mouth will get the job done. And of course, the middle flags would always showcase, like, the peak of 90s electronic technology at the time. All right, for this obstacle, we're going to dump a bunch of bullshit on your head, and then there's, like, a flag or something. I don't know. Harvey, what's the prize they win? It's a Panasonic VCR! <laughs> 
That's right, this bad boy comes with tracking, a remote control, and it weighs more than an average fifth grader. Now Dad can watch Smokey and the Bandit right in your very own living room thanks to VCR by Panasonic. Now the grand prize, of course, was at the very end, and this was either a vacation or it was a brand new car, which I thought was very ambitious for a Nickelodeon game show. All right, little Susie, if you get past the rabid Doberman and grab the flight, Harvey wants the grand prize. It's a Ford Escort. <laughs> That's right, it's a 1.6 liter four banger with a top speed of 49 miles per hour. It's cheap, it's economical, and it sounds like the hooker of automobiles. It's the Escort by Ford. So finally they start this out, of course, and let's be honest, it's a complete shit show. I mean, the kids are one thing, they're all spry and limber, they're doing well. But then you got dad lagging behind with his fucking high ass blood pressure, and mom who hasn't fucking ran anywhere since her lacrosse days in high school. They got 60 seconds. They sure as hell ain't winning that Ford Escort, I can tell you that. Hell, even as a kid, I knew how every episode of Double Dare was gonna end. And that is, with time running out, <laughs> and somebody's out of breath dad frantically searching a giant nose for a fucking flag. Oh, that's just bullshit! There's no flag in there! This goddamn game is rigged! Oh, wait a minute, here it is. And then you got Mark Summers coming in out of nowhere. Ah, oh, well, I guess it sucks to suck, doesn't it? Harvey, tell them all the prizes they won. Well, they got the Palm Owl dish soap, the Bugs Bunny pencil sharpener, the Vanilla Ice cassette tape, the Pogo stick, and the gigantic VCR by Panasonic! And then boom, credits roll, the show's over, and your eight-year-old ass is fucking entertained, I can tell you that. That was it. Solid, simple American television in the 90s. Now you turn on TV these days and you gotta watch Dog the Bounty Hunter dressed up as a fucking armadillo. I don't wanna watch that. Just give me a bumbling Midwestern family covered in bullshit trying to win a fucking karaoke machine and I'll be all set. The end. BruceDude.com